The Cleveland Guardians, a team with a cursed history, a team that hasn't won the World Series since Harry S. Truman was in his first term. Back when they were known as the Indians, there were three times the Indians could have won the World Series, but crumbled in all three appearances. Today we're going to take another look at all of them. Play the intro. <laughs> Let's go back to 2016. That was quite the year. Harambe was shot, rip Harambe. A certain president was elected. The Golden State Warriors blew a 3-1 lead against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. And the Indians emerged as a strong team. The Tribe captured the AL Central crown and made the playoffs. In the ALDS, the Indians faced the Boston Red Sox in David Ortiz's final ride. Game 1 saw Cleveland go up early. Despite Boston trying to creep close to a tie, Cleveland would hold on with a 5-4 win. Game 2 was a slaughter. The Indians pounded 4 runs in the second inning. They would add 2 more to take a 2-0 series lead and put the Red Sox on the ropes. Game 3 was a copy of Game 1. The Tribe kept control throughout the game. Even as the Red Sox tried everything, it wasn't enough. The Indians took Game 3 and pulled off a sweep of the Red Sox. For the first time since 2007, when I was only 8 months old, the Indians were going to the ALCS. In the ALCS, the Indians faced the Toronto Blue Jays. The year prior, the Blue Jays made the ALCS but were knocked out in 6 games by the inevitable champion Royals. Just like the Tribe, the Blue Jays had also pulled off a sweep. The only difference was Cleveland was a higher seed than Boston. Toronto had won the AL wildcard game against Baltimore, mainly thanks to Buck Showalter's stupidity. Seriously, why would you choose a struggling pitcher over the Cy Young candidate? Managerial blunders aside, the Jays flew into Texas and punched the Rangers in the mouth in both games in Arlington, then pulled off a walk-off win in Game 3 to sweep the top-seeded Rangers. Game 1 in Cleveland was a pitching duel. Both pitchers silenced each other. Marco Estrada went 8 innings for Toronto. However, he wasn't perfect. In the bottom of the sixth, he allowed a two-run homer to Francisco Lindor, and that was enough. With the Blue Jays being unable to hit anything, the Tribe took Game 1. Game 2 was kind of similar. Carlos Santana put Cleveland in front 1-0 with a home run in the second. Toronto would tie it in the top of the third, but in the bottom half of that inning, Lindor would come up clutch with an RBI single, scoring Raja Davis and putting Cleveland back on top. Toronto's bats were shut down and Cleveland held on to win Game 2 and take a 2-0 series lead. Across the border, the series shifted north to Toronto. In Game 3, the Indians struck first with a run in the first. The Jays would tie with a Michael Saunders home run. Mike Napoli would put the Tribe back in front with a home run of his own. The Blue Jays would even the score again with a run in the fifth. Then in the top of the sixth, Jason Kipnis launched a leadoff home run and Jose Ramirez would add another run to double the Indians' advantage to 4-2. You guessed it by now, the Blue Jays could do nothing the rest of the game. The Tribe held on to win 4-2 and take a 3-0 series lead. In Game 4, the Blue Jays finally got their first lead of the series with runs in the 3rd and 4th. Cleveland would get one back in the top of the 5th, but Toronto would add three more with two runs in the 7th and one in the 8th. The Jays held on to win 5-1 and force a Game 5. In Game 5, the Indians wasted no time with the run in the top of the first. Carlos Santana and Coco Crisp would each get home runs to extend the lead to 3-0. The Blue Jays ran out of gas and sputtered at the worst time. With nothing left, the Indians held on and won by a score of 3-0 to win the pennant and advance to the World Series for the first time since 1997. In the World Series, the Indians faced the Chicago Cubs. If the Indians' World Series drought was depressing, the Cubs was worse. The Cubs haven't won a World Series since 1908. They haven't made the World Series since 1945, when Harry S. Truman was president. This was the ultimate World Series to decide whose World Series drought finally ended. In Game 1, the Indians got off the ground running with two runs in the first. Roberto Perez would bust it open with two home runs to help the Indians crush the Cubs 6-0. In Game 2, the Cubs would score for the first time with runs in the first and third. 
Chicago would add three more in the fifth. Cleveland would get one back, but wouldn't have anything else. Chicago took Game 2 to even the series. Game 3 saw the series shift to the Windy City. Both teams seemed to have left their offenses in the land, as neither team could score. Until the top of the 7th, when a single by Coco Chris scored Michael Martinez to put the Indians in front. The Cubs could do nothing in the batter's box. The Tribe took Game 3 1-0 and regained the series lead. Game 4 started in favor of the Cubbies with a run in the first. Carlos Santana would tie the game with a leadoff home run in the second. Cleveland would add another in that inning and two more later to go up 4-1. Then in the top of the seventh, Jason Kipnis would launch a three-run home run to extend the lead to 7-1. The Cubs would get a home run from Dexter Fowler, but nothing else as the Indians took Game 4 7-2 and went up 3-1 in the series. All the Indians needed to do was win one more game. Game 5 started right as Jose Ramirez hit a solo home run to put the Indians in front 1-0. Chris Bryant would tie the game with a home run of his own. More base hits would lead to Anthony Rizzo scoring, giving the Cubs the lead. A sack fly from David Ross would tack another run, making it 3-1. Cleveland would get one back, but Chicago would hold on and win 3-2 to force a Game 6. Back to Cleveland for Game 6. Once again, all the Indians needed to do was win one game and they would win the World Series. What seemed like a steady start for pitcher John Tomlin turned rocky when Chris Bryant launched a home run with two outs over the left field wall. Two base hits and a double by Addison Russell put three runs on the board for the Cubbies. Then in the third inning, with the bases loaded, Addison Russell struck once again, this time with a back-breaking grand slam to make it 7-0 Chicago. Cleveland would finally get on the score sheet with runs in the 4th and 5th, but it was too late. Anthony Rizzo would launch a 2-run home run, extending the Cubs' lead. Even as the Indians got one run in the ninth, they had nothing else. The Cubs had forced a Game 7. Game 7. This time, the Indians really needed to win this one. The Cubs struck first with a leadoff homer by Dexter Fowler. Carlos Santana tied the game with an RBI single. Then Chicago put a squeeze hold on Game 7. The Cubs got two runs in the fourth. Javier Baez, on the first pitch he saw in the fifth, sent a home run into a sea of invading Cubs fans. Another RBI single would make it 5-1 Cubbies. Should be over for the Tribe. Or was it? With runners at second and third, a wild pitch would knock down Cubs catcher David Ross and allow two runs to score, shrinking the deficit to 5-3. Ross would make up for it with a home run of his own, making it 6-3 Cubs. Now it should be over. It looked like it, as the Cubs seemed to have shut down the Indians' bats. In the bottom of the 8th, a world this Chapman was brought in to close it out. It wouldn't start that way as Brandon Geyer hit an RBI double to make it 6-4. Then with a 2-2 count, 2 outs, and Geyer on 2nd, Rajay Davis sent a game-tying 2-run home run over the left field wall. 6-6. We have a tie game. Neither team scored in the ninth. Game 7 needed extra innings. But before that, a 17-minute rain delay put this game to a pause. In the 10th, with two runners on, Ben Zobra sent a ball into the left field wall, scoring Albert Almora and giving the Cubs the lead again. A base hit by Miguel Montero would add another, making it 8-6. The bottom of the 10th didn't start well for the Indians. The Cubs got the first two outs. Then Brandon Geyer was walked and then shifted to second on a catcher's interference call. Rajay Davis then narrowed the score to 8-7. Mike Montgomery came in to face Michael Martinez. With a no one pitch, Martinez grounded it to Bryant. Despite Martinez hustling to first, Bryant's throw reached Rizzo in time. The Chicago Cubs had won the World Series for the first time since 1908. I hate saying that as a Cardinals fan. More importantly, the Cleveland Indians had blown a 3-1 lead in the World Series. 2017 started a little rocky for Cleveland. The Tribe hovered around 500 for most of the season, but still led the AL Central thanks to the rest of the division falling apart. Then came late August, a record-breaking hot streak, 22 straight wins, the longest winning streak in American League history. The Indians were going into the postseason with all of the momentum. 102 wins, the AL Central crown, and the top seed in the American League. In the ALDS, the Indians faced the New York Yankees. In Game 1, Cleveland struck first with a run off a double play. 
Then Jay Bruce hit a two-run home run to extend the Indians' lead to 3-0. Bruce would add another run with, with a sack fly. The Yankees would go scoreless as the Indians held on to win 4 nothing. In Game 2, the Yankees got their first lead when Gary Sanchez hit a two-run homer to put New York ahead. Carlos Santana would tie the game with a two-run RBI single. Jason Kipnis would then give Cleveland the lead with an RBI single. Starlin Castro would even the score with an RBI single. Then with Castro and Greg Bird on, Aaron Hicks launched a three-run home run over the right field wall, making it 6-3 Yankees. Then the top of the fifth, with Didi Gregorius on first, Greg Bird hit a two-run home run, increasing the lead to 8-3. Should be over. Or was it? In the bottom of the sixth, the bases were loaded with two outs. With one crack of the bat, Francisco Lindor smashed a towering grand slam to shrink the deficit to 8-7. To then in the bottom of the eighth, Jay Bruce hit an opposite field home run to tie the game. With neither team being able to do anything in the ninth, this game needed extras. Both teams would show off great defensive plays, keeping this game knotted at 8. In the bottom of the 13th, Austin Jackson would walk. Then Jackson stole second, getting into scoring position. Jan Gomes then hit a single, Jackson came home to score, and the Indians took game 2. All the Indians had to do was win one game in the Bronx and they would move on to the ALCS. Game 3 was an outstanding pitching matchup between Carlos Carrasco and Masahiro Tanaka. Neither team could get anything past eat their pitcher. In the bottom of the 7th, Andrew Miller came in. Greg Bird was up, and he clobbered a long home run to right field, breaking the tie and putting the Yankees in front 1-0. That was the only run New York scored all night, but that was enough, as Cleveland could do nothing in the batter's box. Even with two runners on in the ninth, the Tribe were shut down. The Yankees took Game 3 and shortened the series to a 2-1 Yankees lead. Once again, all the Indians had to do was win one game. Game 4 started in favor of the hometown Yankees with an RBI double by Todd Frazier. Then Aaron Hicks singled, scoring Frazier. In that same inning, Aaron Judge would double, extending the lead to 4-0 New York. With the bases loaded, Brett Gardner hit a grounder to third baseman Gio Urshela, who threw to first, except he threw too high, causing Santana to jump to grab it. That caused another run to score. Cleveland finally woke up in the top of the fourth with a two-run home run by Carlos Santana. Then Roberto Perez got his first home run of the postseason, making the score a closer 5-3. Brett Gardner would hit a sack fly, scoring Frazier. Gary Sanchez hit an opposite field home run to increase the lead to 7-3. With the Tribe's offense not showing up once again, the Yankees had forced a game 5. You'll get the drill by now. The Indians only have to win one game. Except if they lose this game, their season is done. Game 5 wouldn't start that way. With two outs in the first, Didi Gregorius launched a solo home run over the right field wall, giving New York an early lead. Meanwhile, Cleveland could do nothing against CeCe Sabathia. Then with a runner on the top of the third, Gregorius did it again. A two-run homer to extend the Yankees' lead to 3-0. The Indians finally got runs with back-to-back -back RBI singles, narrowing the score to 3-2. In the top of the ninth, Brett Gardner hit a single, scoring Aaron Hicks. A throw intended for Francisco Lindor was bobbled and retrieved by Urshela, who threw home, except it was late as Frazier scored to make it 5-2 Yankees. As the Indians went down in the ninth, another outstanding season ended in a disappointing choke. 2018 had a lot of pressure on the Indians, not only to overcome two of the biggest playoff meltdowns in baseball history against two of the most toxic and insufferable fan bases, but it would be the final season for Chief Wahoo. After many years of protests from Native Americans, the Indians in Major League Baseball agreed to retire the logo after the 2018 season, much to the dismay of many tribe supporters and tradition clinging fans from the opposition. 2018 saw the Indians hover around 500 for most of the season. They were winning, but that was mainly due to starting pitching, a few bats, and the AL Central tripping over each other. The rest of the bats were underwhelming and the bullpen couldn't close a door properly. They did get Josh Donaldson at the trade deadline. Cleveland might have won the division, but they had many flaws. Could the Indians pull it off? Who are they facing in the playoffs? The defending champion Houston Astros. Game 1 didn't help the Indians cause. Alex Bregman sent a leadoff home run into the Crawford boxes to give the Astros a 1-0 lead. H-Town would add another run with an RBI single. 
Then in the bottom of the fifth, George Springer and Jose Altuve hit back-to-back -back home runs to extend the lead to 4-0. Cleveland would get two runs back in the top of the sixth, but Martin Maldonado, of all people, would smash the fourth Astros home run to make it 5-2. Houston would add two more runs and take Game 1 by a score of 7-2. Not a good start. Game 2 started better for the Indians. Francisco Lindor would give the Tribe their first lead of the series with a solo home run in the top of the third. In the bottom of the sixth, the Astros had two runners on. Marwin Gonzalez hit a two-run double to give the Astros a 2-1 lead. Alex Bregman would add to the lead with another home run. Houston would hold on and take Game 2. Game 3, a game the Indians needed to win to stay alive. Cleveland would score first off a sack fly. In the fifth, George Springer, on the first pitch he saw, tied the game with a home run. Lindor would give the Indians the lead back with a home run of his own. Then it all fell apart. A string of bad defensive plays would allow the Astros to tie the game. Then with two runners on, Marwin Gonzalez gave the Strohs their first lead of the afternoon. George Springer would get his second home run of the game, making it 5-2. Gonzalez would add to the lead with an RBI single. A wild pitch would bring home another run. And to top it off, Carlos Correa would smash an opposite field 3-run home run to extend the lead to 10-2. To Both teams would add a run and that was it. Chief Wahoo died not with a bang but a whimper. It wasn't a choke this time, yay? 2019 saw the Indians miss the playoffs due to injuries and cheapness. Cleveland would make the playoffs in the shortened 2020 season but were swept in the wildcard series by the Yankees. Following a season with no playoffs and a name change, the Guardians made the playoffs in 2022. They even won the wildcard series against the Rays, only to lose in five games once again to those damn Yankees. The Guardians would miss the playoffs again in 2023. Today the Guardians are surprisingly good. As a small market team with a skin flint owner, you wouldn't expect Cleveland to have one of the best records in baseball right now. Perhaps it has to do with new manager Steven Vogt. Maybe the Guardians have a chance to finally win the World Series for the first time in more than 75 years. Will the Penguin note baseball jinx work like it did with the Rangers last year? Only one way to find out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Today's shoutout goes to Ada Lee. I'll see you in the next video.